Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. This is the Moneymaker webinar for our reseller partners. Um, we're grateful that you've taken this time to join us. We know that it's been a pretty unprecedented time in this world right now um, with COVID and everything that's going on. So we really hope that you're all staying safe. And we just wanted to remind you that we at GoDaddy, we're all here to help you to continue to run your businesses successfully. So for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, this is a webinar for reseller partners where we cover product and marketing updates. Um, there have been a couple of changes over the past few months, so I just want to give a quick headliner on some housekeeping items um, up front, and then we will jump right into our topic for today's webinar. So first up, we've had some changes on the reseller team. We've been um, transitioning roles and responsibilities. Um, I will be stepping away from this role in the next few weeks and moving into a new role. I'm still going to be working with GoDaddy, but I'm working on different projects and I will no longer be working on the reseller engagement um, role. So with that change, we have a few new team members stepping in for reseller support. Andy McElwain, um, I, we introduced him on the community a couple of weeks ago, so some of you um, may have already um, read his bio and learned a little bit more about him. Um, but he is amazing and he by no means is he new to GoDaddy. He um, has actually been leading content with GoDaddy for the past five years. And um, in fact, he's actually done a lot of work for the reseller um, engagement and content on the back end. So he's going to be stepping in and taking over um, the community, Reseller Rodeo. And in addition to that, he's also covering all content marketing, including the blog um, and anything having to do with content. Um, we have another person that will be stepping in who we have not announced yet, and that person is going to cover everything else related to reseller marketing and engagement, including anything having to do with communications on the RCC, the reseller resource portal, all types of communication, um, and everything having to do with product and feature launches and end of lives um, from a marketing perspective. So uh, a very clean way to think about it. Essentially, this person is going to be doing everything um, having to do with reseller um, engagement um, outside of the community and content. So again, we'll introduce this person uh, in the next couple of weeks. In terms of uh, webinar topics and cadence, um, historically we've mixed the topics of the webinar to include a combination of both um, updates on the marketing side as well as new product information. Um, but for the past several months, we've um, focused these webinars on one specific topic, and we've gotten great feedback in terms of engagement, and we've heard that it's easier to look up um, product content on an in individual topic if you're kind of using it um, for reference and looking it up in the future. So we're going to continue with that format, and we'll post either um, pre-recorded or live webinars um, when we have new launches and or reseller updates. And then in addition to our regular webinars, um, that you're all familiar with. Andy has also started a weekly webinar for all GoDaddy partners. And the first part of the webinar series is gonna be focused on helping your clients and customers sell online. So this is a totally new approach and we'd love to hear your feedback. Any suggestions, um, we're open um, to any feedback that you have. The first one is actually gonna to be tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And this one is gonna focus on selling with WordPress. Um, so we'll share out the link so that um, you can join us if you're available tomorrow um, here on this chat. And then we'll also post the information on the community site. And then going forward, we'll, we'll make sure that you have all of the information on all the webinars so that you can be informed and just stay up to date on everything having to do with the reseller and um, content related to helping you sell more. Okay, so that's that for housekeeping. So now we're gonna shift gears and go into the topic for today. So for today's topic, um, if we can switch to the next slide, we have a webinar and the, the focus is gonna be uh, a new product hosting, on the hosting side, uh, virtual private server four. So you're gonna hear us refer to this as VPS four. Um, and with us today, we have the experts who are going to share everything that you need to know about this product. So first up, we have Paola Frignani, who is the product marketing manager, and she's going to walk us through all the background of the launch, the benefits, and she's also going to highlight how um, the version 4 is different from VPS 3. 
Then we have Katya, who is a product manager, and she's going to walk us through additional product information and features. And then um, Ben is going to walk us through the product demo. And then, as always, for the reseller team, we have our product manager, Chelsea, who is also here uh, to answer any questions uh, that may come up. So um, before we dive right in, just some quick reminders. If you have questions, just enter them in the Q&A, and then we're going to wait until the presentation is over to address all questions. And then um, all the presenters will be monitoring the Q&A and they'll answer the questions that are relevant to um, their sections. And then um, also as a reminder, this webinar is one hour, but if it's gonna be recorded. So if you need to jump off, that's fine. And we're gonna post, we'll post the recording on our YouTube channel as well as the reseller portal. My only suggestion is that if you have a question, just uh, post it in the Q&A before dropping so that we can address your question at the end. That's kind of the purpose of having the live webinars to be able to interact and, and ask the questions real time. Um, so without further ado, I will hand it over to Paula. Hello, everyone. So we want to start um, talking a little bit about why we are launching a new VPS hosting. And that is because we are always super committed to providing um, super high performing innovative technology to our customers and to your customers. And with this new VPS hosting, uh, we also have new plans and a clearer definition of the, the level of management that is included with uh, all the plans. So who is a great fit for the new VPS hosting? We know some of you guys work on VPS hosting for your clients and some of you guys also resell the VPS hosting for your clients. So we are hoping that this webinar will uh, provide you guys with enough information about the product for both cases. So let's address a little bit uh, who, who, VPS for, uh, who VPS hosting is a good fit for. So developers and system, system administrators with experience managing a server, and they are seeking full control over their hosting environment. Uh, some of the use cases that we have here are folks looking for um, a hosting platform to build a resource intensive site or managing multiple sites on a single account or setting up uh, a web hosting plan with individual quotas or running multiple PHP versions and installing individual mo uh, modules. So these are some of the use cases, and here you can see some other, uh, for example, setting up test environments and uh, running sometimes some analytical applications that are pretty heavy. So VPS hosting is a good solution for this kind of use case. We also wanna uh, share with you guys a little bit about what are the main benefits that we are focusing on with the new VPS hosting. So this product is all about performance, control and flexibility and ease. So the customers, uh, your customers will get full root access with SSH keys for total control, as well as command line for flexibility and power. We have global data centers. We're gonna uh, talk a little bit more about the data centers in the product features session. Uh, we also have options of SSD, um, sorry, we also have options of uh, uh, different server uh, configurations that are going to be great to address the need for just about any size of uh, application project. We offer KVM virtualization. And uh, we offer different levels of management. As I said in the beginning, one of the objectives of this uh, new VPS hosting product is to have a clear definition of what is included with our, our fully managed offer. Something that is also really cool that we are adding is uptime and performance monitoring with the capability of setting alerts and notifications. We also offer uh, control panels uh, that can be added as add-ons to self-managed VPS hosting. 
So uh, we are going to drill down into all these features a little further down the presentation. So this is really what we are focusing on, performance control and flexibility. And this is what we have, the features that we have to support these main benefits. Here's what's changed from VPS Generation 3 to VPS Generation 4. So before we used to have three levels of management, meaning a self-managed VPS hosting, a managed version, and a fully managed version. Now we only have two levels of management. So a self-managed VPS hosting and a fully managed VPS hosting. The fully managed VPS hosting includes dedicated 24 seven support and server management with the caveat that the fully managed offer is only available for English speaking countries because the, the, the team that supports this offer uh, speaks English. So for now, only available for English speaking markets. Before in our generation three plans, the highest plan was at four CPUs and eight gigas of RAM. Now we have a super broad range for customers to choose from. Uh, they have options to double the RAM. And now we have a broader range from one CPU to eight CPUs, from one giga RAM to 400 giga uh, SSDs, oh, to 32 giga RAM, sorry, 400 giga SSD space. Also in our generation three, the customer could not add a control panel to a self-managed. They could only get the control panel if they chose to go with the managed VPS. We don't have that managed I'm, layer anymore in generation sorry, four. I'm, I'm sorry, Paula, can you just adjust your mic a little bit? Cause it's, we're coming in a little bit fuzzy. So yeah, sure. Is this okay. better? Yeah, well, much better. Thank you. All right. Now with the generation four, uh, customers can add the control panels to the self-managed VPS. So uh, that will be an add-on. So they don't have to go with a managed offer anymore. They can add, they, they have the choice of having a control panel or not in the self-managed VPS hosting. And uh, lastly, as I mentioned before, we now have a very cool uh, monitoring feature that allows um, the customer to set up notifications, for example, email notifications. And before we only had uptime monitoring and now we are including a lot of other monitoring features such as disk, a CPU, and a RAM. Here we have a sneak peek of what it looks like in the, in the website. Uh, so to the left, you can see the self-managed VPS hosting plans. So you can see that the customer can toggle between standard RAM and high RAM. And to the right, you can see an example of a fully managed uh, VPS hosting screenshot. Um, the customer can also choose standard RAM or high RAM. And uh, just reinforcing that the fully managed offer is, of, is available only in English speaking markets because this includes server management and uh, the team that supports uh, for now is English only. This is what it looks like in the cart, uh, in the config page. So if a customer selects a self-managed um, plan, he's gonna go to a, a page where he can choose what is the OS that he wants to have in this uh, VPS hosting. It can be either Linux or Windows. And as I said before, he can choose to add a control panel to the self-managed VPS hosting. To the right, you see a screenshot of the fully managed uh, VPS hosting config page. And here again, the customer can choose if he's gonna go with Linux or Windows. And for the fully managed, the control panel is already included. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Katya to give a little bit more details on the, on the product features that I super briefly mentioned uh, before in the presentation. Well, thank you, Paula. Um, hi, everyone. 
Hi, Katya. Oh. Sorry, before you get started, um, can everyone hear Katya okay? Just want to make sure the mic is okay. Can you just uh, say something, Katya? Sure. Just testing to see if you guys can hear me. Is that? Can everyone hear her clearly and okay? Yep. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so you can go ahead and get started. Thanks, Katya. Well, thanks, Christina. Um, yeah, I'm Katya. I'm the product manager for VPS4. And I will just go into a little bit more detail on all of the good stuff that Paola just touched on. We can go to the next slide. Is, did the slide change for you guys? Oh, no, I'm still, oh. I'm still seeing it. Can we switch to the next slide, please? Cool. Um, if you guys are watching after the fact, you can just pause on this page. I'm going to go into details about all of these boxes um, in the next few slides, but this is just kind of a snapshot overview and um, I'll dive into it after this. So we can go to the next slide and get started. Cool. So one of the, the biggest updates in this generation of our VPS is that we are now present in three data centers and we have a European data center, an Asian data center, and one in the US. So wherever in the world that you are located, you can now connect to the data center that best fits your needs. So higher performance, lower latency, um, and you can switch between data centers if you should decide that you want to move your server for whatever reason. Um, this generation is also built uh, on OpenStack with KVM. So a full virtualization, you get a lot more control um, along with kernel modification capabilities. So you're not sharing the kernel with anyone. Um, it's as much control as we've ever had uh, for our VPS products. And then we have SSD versus the HDDs from our generation three. So much higher performance. Um, and a lot more power for your server. Um, moving on. Um, so we have a very wide range of tiers now, as opposed to our standard um, that we had one, two, three, and four CPUs, but we have an eight CPU offering as well. So we go up to 400 gigs of storage and up to 32 gigs of RAM. So as before, we just had what we now call our standard RAM plans. We now have a high RAM plan set that offers double the RAM uh, than the original standard RAM plan. So if you need a little bit more power, you have the option for a, a slightly bigger price to get uh, double the RAM on your server. Um, so and we also have a, a starter plan, which is a very tiny baby, one CPU, one gig RAM, 20 gig storage plan. Um, you can't use a control panel and it's on Linux only, but these smaller plans are great if you just need uh, to spin up a quick test server or something like that. Um, so there's really a plan for everyone's needs with this new portfolio. Um, another major update is the clearer definition of management levels. We used to have before self-managed, managed, and fully managed. And the, the gray area for us was we offered a managed uh, VPS, but that was really only defined by the presence or the absence of a control panel. So we had some customers that were expecting a, a certain degree of management, but the, the support was only you know, the same as a self-managed. So we removed the managed offering to set a more clear expectation about what kind of support you will get. So we call it self-managed and fully managed. The self-managed, you have the option of adding a control panel. You can purchase cPanel or Plesk. We also offer a free open source control panel that you can configure when you set up your server from ISP config. Um, but this fully managed support, you get this 24 seven white glove team that will help you set up and manage your server. Um, and like Paolo mentioned, it's only available in the English speaking markets, but we're hoping that this will set a more clear expectation for customers and you know, give customers the option to get the support that they really need and define that very clearly for them what they will get. 
Um, probably the feature I'm most excited about is our new uptime and resource monitoring uh, feature. And whereas for self-managed before, there was only CPU, RAM, and storage, I hesitate to call it monitoring, but we, we would tell you how much CPU, RAM, and storage you were using. Um, and self-managed customers did not have uptime monitoring. Our managed customers did. But with this new feature, you get a historical view of your usage, and you also get uh, an alert system that will email you when your server crosses a certain, certain threshold. So if your usage is too high or your server is down, you'll get an email, whereas before you would just have to kind of figure it out on your own that something was wrong with your server. So a way more proactive way to let you know how your server is doing. And if you are a fully managed customer, not only do you get CPU, RAM, and storage monitoring, but you will also get various service checks like FTP, POP, IMAP, SSH. Um, that's not shown in the screenshot right now. This is what you would see with the self-managed customers. But in addition to the additional service checks, the fully managed team can configure domain checks or any other checks that you want to see behind the scenes. And not only that, but they will go in and fix the issues for you so you don't have to worry about it. We'll let you know that something's wrong with transparent for transparency, but the fully managed team will be on top of whatever issues your server may be experiencing. So a big plus for having a fully managed service. Um, so I, I kind of jumped ahead, but that's this is what I was mentioning. So if you're a fully managed customer, you'll also get these service checks that kind of tell you a little bit more about your server health and the fully managed team can configure additional checks behind the scenes. Um, but these are the ones that come right out of the box. Uh, we also offer a recovery console that's in app. So if you're on your dashboard managing your server and for whatever reason you get locked out with your primary SSH access, you can use this recovery console to get into your server, um, which is a great kind of backdoor way to help you manage your server and hopefully, you know, one less touch point for your customers with, with support. And then with this generation, we have um, automatic and on-demand backups. With our previous generation, these were usually taken behind the scenes and they were used for primarily for disaster recovery and you could pay to have them restored. And with this, you have uh, the option to schedule an on-demand backup whenever you want. And then we also run a, an automatic backup once every seven days, um, not only for your personal benefit, but this is also what we use for disaster recovery. So if the, the schedule doesn't work for you, you have the option to reschedule the time frame that your automatic backup occurs, or for whatever reason, you can disable that schedule, but you, you, we need this for disaster recovery. But two great backup options for you um, just and you can restore from it at no cost uh, whenever you'd like and then we have a, a new ui with this one so it's a little bit more aligned with other products that godaddy offers and we have this page-based layout that um, kind of breaks down what it is that you want to do with your server and this is a great platform for us to kind of build out additional features without cluttering the UI. So if you have a control panel, we give you an SSO button right at the top, your server actions that those kind of stick there all the time. And then as you go between the tabs, um, you can manage different parts of your server. And that's it for me. I will hand, hand it over to Ben, who's going to do a product demo and show you guys in real life how this all works. Thanks so much. Thanks for that. Hey there, thanks so much for joining us for this Money Maker webinar. I Just before I let that play through, everybody hears the audio, correct? Yep, I can hear it okay. Outstanding. I hope everyone is doing well and enjoying our showcase of our newest offering, the fourth generation virtual private servers. As we previously covered, we've been able to expand and enhance our DPS lineup dramatically this year, and we're excited to bring it to you folks, our valued resellers. Let's take a high-level tour through the product the way your customers will see it.
Our fourth generation VPSs bring a brand new, clean, and easy to use hosting user interface. For the purpose of this demo, I've provisioned a Linux VPS with cPanel, though we also offer Plesk for Linux, as well as Windows Server 2016, and also VPSs with no control panel. Each of the tabs on the dashboard is made up of simple cards meant to give the end user at a glance details or one click solutions to the most common tasks. Here, we display each of the cPanels that have been created on the server. From the same card, I have one click access to cPanel admin, as well as the ability to create additional cPanels without the need to log into WHM. Down below, we can see a list of actions taken towards the VM, like reboots, stops, and starts. The real-time resource usage and uptime monitoring stats are available here in the third card. It is also quick and easy to purchase upgraded resources from right within the dashboard. Recommendations are made based on the end user's current configuration to reduce confusion and the need to navigate away from their server to manage it. Simple commands are available here to stop, start, restart, and reset the VM, while here we have one-click access to launch WHM automatically without the need to enter credentials again. The Monitoring tab gives us a historical overview of the VM's resource utilization. This gives end users insight into how the VM handles traffic and activities even when they're not watching. One of the most useful features in this new enhanced monitoring is the ability to receive notifications about resource utilization or downtime via email. These emails can include information about both usage as well as service accessibility, uptime, or failures. Under the Backups tab, we manage our snapshots. Snapshots are automatically taken every seven days. End users can also take on-demand snapshots before major updates or upgrades. The snapshots are an entire VM and cannot be pieced apart. While a snapshot does not count towards one's disk usage, it's important to note that only one snapshot is retained at any given time. So end users who make a lot of changes or manage a lot of unique content should consider backup solutions for each website with longer retention terms like our website security backup product. For troubleshooting and recovery, we're able to offer KVM support for the first time in our fourth generation VPSs. This is useful for users who may accidentally restrict themselves in a firewall configuration or make a change preventing external access. The recovery console operates from the parent server and as such is able to connect to the VM under most circumstances. The settings tab gives the end user the ability to manage the server's identity, like the name and host name, as well as the credentials in the event that they are lost or forgotten. Thanks everyone so much for your time. Hope you have a good rest of the meeting. All right, great. Thanks so much, um, Paula, Katya, and Ben for your presentation. Um, so we're gonna jump to the uh, Q&A. Um, there's just one question that's outstanding um, from me, Seward. Can you, uh, do you want to specify what the issues are so maybe we can address them? And then if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to enter them now. Um, there was one question that was posted and answered. I'll go ahead and repeat it. It's, um, is this available for resellers now? And we answered that it's available in the reseller control center to price out and it's going to be live next week. Um, the ETA is April 29th. Um, Ni, uh, Stuart, we can't hear you, but if you can just type in your question, we can read it and we'll address it. Great, thanks, Ni. Okay, so Ron, you have a question regarding OLS. Um, we are working on that. Uh, Chelsea, do you wanna give a quick update? Yeah, um, it is in its final testing. Uh, I'm hoping that it is going to be uh, coming available in like the next month or so. Um, the issue right now is creating uh, PFIDs. It is underway. The team is working on it and, uh, and will be ready as soon as possible. Um, but again, expecting it to be uh, possible in the next month, but uh, it's right now so to be determined. That's awesome. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, 
pain. So does, if anyone else has any other questions, um, please enter them. Okay, uh, Chelsea, so you wanna, uh, you wanna go ahead and read the questions in the chat. Maybe you can address them individually. The last one from Nisur. Hey Chelsea, are you there? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, may I, I think if we could, um, we'll need to try this out individually. I will um, I grab your uh, contact information or send me um, an email with the information. Um, it's cvargo at GoDaddy. Um, and I can take a look into the situation. Um, when, so we've had a similar issue uh, be reported and when we have looked into it, it is due to like, there's a issue with your cookies in looking at what you're looking at. We have never been able to duplicate it from like a actual customer's account. So if, um, if we're, we're looking into this, we're gonna, well, absolutely, that's a huge issue and, and I'm certainly not gonna be, um, you know, just saying it's a, a cookie issue, we will be looking into that. Um, if you can send me the details of uh, what your reseller account is so I can uh, dig in uh, as needed there. Um, but when we have encountered that before, it's uh, it, we've only seen it where the reseller owner is jumping between a couple of different accounts that they have um, and that it's never happened when it's been a customer of yours. Um, but we'll, I'll absolutely be looking into that because uh, I've, I've never, um, that's a, a horrible thing. So we would be uh, very, very curious. So please send me the information. And then her second question has to do um, the issue with cPanel dashboard not functioning, um, such areas like PHP version, Accent Center, et cetera. Um, but again, please send me um, more information. Uh, we'd have to get with the hosting team to see what is going on um, there, because I'm not sure what you mean by not functioning. Um, so we, we'd pull in whoever needs to be pulled in at that point. There is another question about the configuration path in the cart being similar to current VPS. Um, it is going to be um, pretty similar. Um, when uh, I know that they've shown a couple screenshots of um, of the storefront page, once your customer is going to be selecting the plan size that they want, they're brought to what we call a config page, and on that config page, they're going to be selecting the uh, control panel that they want to use, um, the length of time that they are purchasing for, and then, um, and then being brought to the cart. So it'd be uh, similar to what, uh, what happens today with that uh, config page in the middle. Uh, I need the, uh, the email address again is C, like Chelsea, Vargo, V-A-R-G-O, at godaddy.com. Yeah, I typed it in so you can see it as well. V as in uh, Victor, A-R-G-O. Okay, great. So she said she's going to send a login to duplicate the errors that she's having. Sounds good. Okay, it looks like those are all the questions we have. Um, so we'll, we'll end a little early here. Um, as a reminder, we, um, is there anything else that anyone would like to add before we wrap up? I don't think so. If there are any other questions, feel free to send them to reseller team at godaddy.com um, for uh, any other additional follow-up. Yeah, and Andy, um, if you're there, um, if we could share out that link 
um, just to make sure that we have to have the information for tomorrow's webinar. We want to make sure we get as much information um, to you, the resellers, as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be in the chat, but you're going to find all the webinars that we're doing on Crowdcast at crowdcast.io slash GoDaddy. I'll put it in the chat as well. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. Um, so just a reminder, this, this has been recorded, so we'll post it on the YouTube and on um, the resource portal and, and a link to it on the community site. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Stay safe and have a great day or evening, wherever you are in the world. Talk to you next time.